Okay, at 12.05, I'm gonna say we are gonna get going. And I'd like to welcome everybody to the third annual insider chat for the Ridge Trail, uh, the Ridge Trail in Bloom um, 2023. We're really excited to have you here. We've got all the staff on board and um, it's gonna be a, a really exciting presentation. There's lots going on um, at the Ridge Trail and we're ready to share it with you. Next slide, please. So just a little technical background for our Zoom webinar. Please um, be patient with us if anything goes wrong. Uh, we suggest if you are having technical difficulties, you could turn off your video and try to zoom, zoom back in, log back into Zoom, or use the phone call that should be um, listed in the email. And we can also try to help you in the chat if you're actually in the um, webinar with us. And uh, you can also try Zoom customer support. But please let us know if, you, if you're having difficulty hearing us or, or getting in. Next slide, please. And um, we're going to reverse our welcome this time and have you introduce yourselves um, through sharing a poll with us about what area you live in, city and county. And then an estimate of how many miles you might have hiked, biked, or ridden on the Ridge Trail. So I'm going to ask Lisa to share our poll, please. It looks like we're getting lots of responses coming in. Rapid fire voting. We have just about 20 of our participants. If you want to just take another couple seconds to, to vote. All right, and that's just about a minute of voting. So we're gonna, Lisa, will you wanna end it there and see what our results are? And it looks like we have 75% um, of you are hikers on the Ridge Trail, 5% are runners, 30% are bikers, and, and then a, uh, 5%, which is one out of 20, are equestrians currently. And for where do you live on the Ridge Trail, we have um, a little bit of a all over, but it looks like we are heav heavily um, leaning towards the South Bay and the rest are pretty evenly distributed. So, um, and then how many miles of Ridge Trail have you explored? Uh, well, the good news is that everybody's been on the Ridge Trail, so nobody's less than 20. Um, and, and then pretty much an, an even split, we have six out of 20 that have circumnavigated, um, two that have done over 300 miles, um, two between 20 and 200 and 300, and, um, and then just a smattering of, of the rest. So pretty evenly distributed, lots of room for those who haven't. Um, explored a lot and um, congratulations to everybody who's already circumnavigated. And I think I forgot to say, my name is Marie Sales. I'm the development director here at the Ridge Trail. I'm coming up on, on my um, end of my third year here and I'm really just thrilled to be a part of this community. And thank you all for joining us today. I am gonna turn it over to Janet McBride, our executive director, and she's gonna lead us through um, some introductions and overview. Good afternoon, happy spring. Next next slide, please. So we're saying goodbye, hopefully, to an unusually wet and woolly winter. Um, it did result in some uh, great snow shots um, on the Ridge Trail though, like the one at the left was sent in by one of our friends at Mid Pen. Um, I don't know about all of you, but I'm ready for a break in the rain for longer days for hillsides carpeted in wildflowers and for more time out on the trail. So next slide, please. 
uh, yeah, so we have a really content rich show uh, for you today as we as we wait for the spring weather to kick in and the trails to dry up a bit. Thanks for joining us today for an insider's peek at what's been happening at the council and out on the trail. Uh, so we'll share some exciting trail updates. We'll highlight some of our upcoming events and outings and some of the resources that we have that we hope will inspire your next trail exploration. And then we'll also share uh, so how we're working to bring some more resources to the table um, to help expedite tra trail development. Next, please. So starting with uh, some council updates, uh, this is our staff. We have a small but mighty and very talented team, many of whom you're gonna hear from today. Just wanna do a quick shout out um, to our two newest staff members. Ryan Fritz joined us last November um, as a trail project manager, and he's focusing on the South and East Bay. And then also Natalia Cortez joined in January um, as event and volunteer manager. And then I'll also note that Hannah Barty uh, has a new role. Uh, she moved from events to trail planning, um, also trail project. She's a trail project manager with a focus on the North Bay. Next, please. So we are very fortunate to have an extremely hardworking board of directors. So here they are in a couple of outings last year. They provide leadership, expertise, and dedicated support on and off the trail. Um, I'll also just note that uh, recently the board uh, voted on new officer terms last week. And I want to especially thank Charlie Bowen, our outgoing uh, chair. Thanks, Charlie, for her service. And I also want to recognize Karen Rhodes as our new chair. So um, also just uh, Shout out of huge thanks to all the board members. They give so generously untold hours of volunteer time and service and um, they keep us inspired. So next, please. Sorry. Uh, so, so last but not least, I wanna recognize our incredible park and open space partners. These logos capture the agencies um, and organizations that, the, that support the council as agency members, um, as well as highlighting some of our generous corporate sponsors. Um, also just uh, need to do a big shout out to the Coastal Conservancy. They are a great partner. They support our trail planning work uh, with significant multi-year planning grants. Next, please. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, the Ridge Trail office is moving next month from our Sutter Street location to uh, 6th and Bancroft in uh, Berkeley. Uh, there's a nice event uh, space there and an open patio. So um, we want to give, really wanted to give folks a heads up that you might see a new uh, PO box on our mailing information. Um, also know that we are planning to have an open house the first week of June. We hope to invite everyone over to say hello and uh, see our uh, new space. Okay, so uh, shifting uh, to an overview of the Ridge Trail status. I know most of you know this, but uh, for the benefit of any newbies, the Ridge Trail is intended as a natural trail for hikers, mountain bicyclists, and equestrians. It runs on the ridgelines surrounding San Francisco Bay. We now have 400 dedicated miles with another 150 uh, miles or so of the planned route for an ultimate um, extent of 550 miles. Uh, more of the trail is connected in the center of the region represented by the red lines. And then we have more gaps um, in the far north and the far south, represented by the blue lines on this map. We also have two long connected stretches. Uh, the longest is um, on the west, where about 75 miles are connected, at least for hikers, uh, between Big Rock Ridge and Marin, and all the way down to Highway 92 um, in San Mateo. And then on the east, about 45 miles so far in the East Bay are connected down as far south as Guerin Regional Park. Next slide, please. So uh, last year, um, I wanna invite everyone to keep a close eye on your mailbox or your inbox for our 
annual impact report that's going to come out any day now. And it celebrates um, miles. We had a lot of milestone anniversaries um, last year. Uh, Ridge to Bridge, East Bay Hills Hike and Ride, and Ridge Trail Service Day all celebrated kind of significant anniversaries. And all told, about uh, 4,700 people came out and enjoyed 65 events and trail outings on the Ridge Trail. Uh, the, the impact report also highlights um, trail projects and, and trail progress all around the region. So uh, watch out for your impact report. Next, please. So this is um, switching to the high level goals of our strategic plan. And today's topics really dovetail very closely with the three overarching goals in our strategic plan. They are of course, to complete the trail. And this has to do with all the work we do to plan, build and open trail and to confirm and protect the route. And so this relates to both trail progress in the near term as well as, um, as, well as in the long term. So for the near term, you know, it's all about trail dedications, but for the longer term, we do a lot of work to um, solidify the route. Um, and we look at other studies and initiatives to help address our most challenging, most complicated gaps uh, for the long term. And then the second big goal, experiencing the trail, I think that probably speaks for itself. So it has to do with our events and outings. Um, and also some of the work uh, we're doing to build more resources for circumnavigators. Um, and then lastly, the work to build and sustain the Ridge Trail Council. Um, one of the big priorities there is diversity, equity, and inclusion, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then also work to, uh, again, bring more resources um, for the to the table for trail development. Next, please. So as I mentioned, uh, DEI, it's central um, to our mission. It's a big priority um, in the strategic plan. Um, and this has to do with making sure that um, all of our events, our programs and our communication are all as inclusive and as welcoming um, to all as possible. Um, and this includes partnering with community organizations like Outdoor Afro, Save by Nature, and Latino Outdoors, and includes collaborating with uh, other uh, groups and agencies like the Coastal Conservancy, Together Bay Area, and all our park partners. Um, and then also just uh, wanted to mention that two of our biggest trail openings this year prominently celebrate uh, tribal nations in terms of heritage and continuing active involvement. So you'll hear uh, uh, more about all of this in our presentation ahead. Next, please. All right, so uh, in terms of trail progress, well, last year was a slow year in terms of new, new trail miles opened and added. So that happens sometimes, uh, but we're making up for it this year. Uh, we're going to be making big strides um, in trail mileage and opening some long awaited um, sections. So perhaps the biggest story of the year is Napa, um, where we will gain 15 miles in three locations, including um, two new public openings, um, including the Ridge Trail through Calistoga and on a new privately built uh, section called Dan's Wild Ride between Angwin and Moore Creek Park. And um, then also in Napa, uh, there's a land trust, there's a property that's um, operated by the land trust of Napa County, um, where a significant change is within reach. This is an area where there is an existing trail and the public is uh, able to visit the preserve through their access by orientation program. So none of that's gonna change, um, but the land trust is now willing to um, allow us to dedicate this section um, under the, under the uh, requirement that we keep it pretty low key and pretty quiet. They don't want hordes of visitors to arrive um, because they're concerned about sensitive habitat and also sensitivity of uh, some private property owners on the Eastern side of the preserve. So in one way, there's no a change, but it is a very significant um, um, advancement for the Ridge Trail because it lets us 
um, celebrate this as part of our dedicated route, um, and it is part of this long, uh, significant connected new stretch in Napa. And then just two marquee openings that you're going to hear a lot more about um, coming up, but just to mention that the trail in Petuino and also the, the Mayan Oyakuma Trail, uh, formerly Rockville, um, Rockville uh, sorry, Rockville Trails and also Coyote Ridge Open Space. Uh, those um, two properties um, are really, again, celebrating. Uh, there's a big story there about the involvement of the Native tribes. So um, let's see, I think. I think now that um, brings me, uh, that's just sort of a, a quick teaser about the trail openings. And what I wanna do now is turn it over to, uh, to our deputy director, to Ryan Mack and the trail team to tell you lots more about trail progress. Thank you, Janet. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ryan Mack, deputy director here with the Ridge Trail. And as Janet mentioned, uh, this is an exciting year for us coming forward. As she mentioned, coming out of the pandemic, it was a bit of a slow year. Some of the delays over the pandemic times uh, for trail development and a few funding gaps here and there uh, led to that. But we're really making up for it this year. Uh, we're looking at 22 miles in various locations, uh, one down in Santa Clara County, one in Solano, and of course, the biggest story of all over in Napa County. Um, next slide, please. All right. Uh, so first, we want to take you around the region a little bit to just go in depth a little more on each of the coming trail openings for this year. So up in the far reaches of uh, northern Napa County, uh, we're working with Napa Land Trust to dedicate nearly seven miles of, of new trail on the uh, Dunn Wild Lake and Duff Preserves. Um, so this trail will uh, provide, as I said, nearly seven miles, and it also will uh, connect into the uh, lower Oat Hill Mine Trail just north of Calistoga. Um, so one thing, I haven't done the full calculation yet, but uh, we are quite excited about being able to talk about a uh, potential uh, long connected stretch in Napa County for the first time, uh, where folks will be able to go all the way from uh, both the Napa Valley State Park, uh, eventually, as you'll hear about uh, later today as well, up the Calistoga Ridge Trail through Calistoga, hit the lower Oat Hill Bind Trail up into the hills, um, and then meet up with the uh, uh, Duff and Dun Wild Lake ranches. So uh, a very exciting possibility there for those of you that uh, like to put some uh, long miles in. Um, of course, we can't have any celebration or publicity around this because there's sensitivities around uh, private landowners as well as uh, wildlife habitat. Um, but there are opportunities to get out there, uh, check out the Napa Land Trust website for access by orientation, um, and keep your uh, eyes and ears tuned for potential uh, Ridge Trail outings there later this year as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, taking you a little further south in Napa County, uh, I already saw some uh, chatter and excitement around uh, Dan's Wild Ride. Um, so this is going to be nearly four miles of beautifully uh, hand-built single-track trail uh, in Napa County. Uh, there are some sensitivities around this due to um, property owners and private property owners in the vicinity. Um, so it's not something we're uh, uh, really going to do a lot of celebration around per se, but do keep your eyes and ears tuned to our website for updates on the map. There's one short stretch of trail that needs to be built, uh, of course, waiting for the, the storms that we've been having to pass so they can put that in. Um, and then we're going to put some uh, signs out there. Um, and then hopefully I'll be able to get out and explore this beautiful section of trail uh, in Napa County. Next slide, please. Yeah, so part of connecting up those almost 20 miles in far northern Cal or far northern Napa County will be this new 4.9 miles of new trail on the Calistoga Ridge Trail. So that portion that Ryan was just discussing around uh, both the Napa Valley and then connecting through Calistoga to Robert Louis Stevenson State Park and Lower Oat Hill Mine Trail. Construction is underway right now for this particular trail. And uh, we're coordinating with the Vine Trail and Napa Valley Transportation Authority for dedication and a grand opening festivity in either September or early October. Um, so I'm sure you all will be getting invites once we're ready to party and celebrate this new long connected stretch. And then moving over to Solano County, 
um, the Petrino Work Cloud Kadoidihi Open Space Park will add 2.5 miles to the new section within Solano County. So uh, access to a 1500 acre preserve, including an accessible all people's trail that connects directly to the Ridge Trail, as well as equestrian parking staging area, an interpretive kiosk that will feature both a Ridge Trail interpretive panel that honors Doris Klein, a local trail hero, and interpretive panels that Solano Land Trust has been partnering with the Yosha Dehi Wintun Nation to develop to honor their ancestral home and present day connection to the land. Additional work that's been ongoing with Solano Land Trust and the Council of Yosha Dehi Wintun Nation includes the renaming of the park. As some people might remember, this current, this used to be called Rockville Trails Preserve. And if we move to the next slide, we'll get a little bit more context from a short video from Solano Land Trust and the council. We are so honored by this gift of a name from the tribe. And we know that it's really special. Because we are a lot of our ancestors roamed that land. Accurately open this location in honor of their history here in Solano County. opportunity for Rockville to not just be this place that we think of as special, but truly valuing the history of this land. And we felt that it was, uh, you know, perfect for us to, to join in with the Solano Land Trust. Um, and we appreciate them reaching out um, to Yosha Dihi for this endeavor. Um, we're extremely excited to partner with them. We know that it's really special. We are working hard to make sure we say the name correctly because we know that matters. I'm Jordan Deferg. I am the operations manager for Solano Land Trust. Uh, and I can say the name. Patwino Wartkla Kadoi Dihi. Patwino Wartkla Kadoi Dihi. Patwino Wartkla Kadoi Dihi. Thank you. And uh, we'll have a pretty busy fall schedule for dedications with the expected opening of Patwino Wartkla Kadoi Dihi Open Space Park also in the fall. Um, there have been a few slight delays due so to storm damage. We're so honored by this gift of a name from the truck. But otherwise, we are looking forward to celebrating that opening together. Great, thanks Hannah. Looks like we're getting it full screen again, but another exciting opening this year is the Mayan Oyakma Coyote Ridge Open Space Preserve down in the South Bay, Santa Clara County. There will be 3.8 miles of ridge trail, part of a whole trail network at the preserve, including staging and a little interactive trail at the parking area. It'll be a great preserve for the rare species in there, but OSA, who's managing the preserve, is also committed to making it a gathering place for the community. So the Ridge Trail Council is excited to host VITs down there and different collaborations with community members. And the grand opening for the preserve is uh, planned for October this fall, but they are starting a early access program starting May 20th, where through permits and docent-led hikes, you can actually go out on the trails. So we're excited to share some more information about that early access and the grand opening when it comes up sooner. And if you go to the next slide, Alex, similar to uh, Petrino, we wanted to share um, the partnership they've had with the tribal nations with the really quick video here. Hoshetuhi, Kanakraka, Monica Viariano, Wetchus Kuchus, Moak Maloney Tribe, San Francisco Bay Area Talk. Good day. I greet you in our native Chochenyo language. I am Monica Viariano. I am the Vice Chairwoman for the Moak Maloney Tribe of the San Francisco Bay Area. I am also the co chair for the Moakma Language Committee. Let me show you how to pronounce Coyote Ridge in the Chochenyo and Thamian languages. It is Mayan Oyakma. Again, it is Mayan Oyakma. Thank you. Ooh, 
Thanks, Alex. You can go to the next one. All right. Uh, thank you, Hannah and Ryan. Um, so yeah, I, we, um, I think neglected to, to do a, a intro there as well, but just a, um, shout out to Hannah Barty, our trail project manager to the North Bay, uh, who's, uh, already been diving in, in a few short months and doing great work in the North Bay. Uh, and Ryan Fritz is our trail project manager for the South Bay. And you'll be hearing from him in a second here as well. Uh, so we always get a lot of questions too, about, uh, People really excited about what's opening this year. Uh, we always get some questions about what's coming in future years as well, uh, particularly around some of these long awaited trail openings as well. Uh, so one thing we just wanted to highlight is uh, this year really is looking like a, a pretty banner year with 22 miles of trails opening, which really gets us uh, uh, quite, a, quite a ways in towards our strategic plan goal of 35 new miles by 2025. And you can kind of see the spread there on the map of these kind of around the region as well. Um, and then next slide, please. We just wanted to give you a bit of a sneak peek for um, two, um, I think, long awaited uh, trail openings. So we're looking uh, next year um, after a long wait for a, a new five mile section between Garen Regional Park and Niles Canyon Road, which we're expecting to open next year. Um, this is area has a, a really beautiful, long scenic ridge area above Union City and Fremont. Uh, the project also uh, is uh, quite impactful because it will extend the longest connected stretch of ridge trail that we have in the East Bay from 45 miles to 50 plus miles, uh, which just opens up incredible options for all sorts of outdoor adventures from potential overnights and multi-days to really long trail runs and rides and such as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and then the other project as well that I know a lot of you uh, longtime Ridge Trail uh, members and followers and supporters is the Southern Skyline, Skyline Extension in San Mateo County. So we just received word uh, last week uh, that construction is likely to begin later this year in fall 2023 after um, um, uh, some uh, minor delays more recently. Um, and the Southern Skyline Extension is going to add over six miles of Ridge Trail, uh, bringing our longest connected stretch uh, on the west side of the Ridge Trail to over 80 miles from Marin up in the north down to uh, nearly a Highway 92 in San Mateo County. Um, and so with construction starting this year, uh, we're looking at a trail dedication and opening in 2025. Um, next slide, please. Yes, thank you. So moving on to... Um, Trail highlights. We also, uh, beyond the trail dedications, we also, for this insider chat, wanted to give you all a little bit of an inside scoop of some of the other work that we've been doing, uh, particularly around uh, routing and planning, which is a lot of the work that we do here at the trail team as well. Um, and so one of these areas, uh, next slide please, uh, is down in the South Bay. Um, and so um, some of you um, particularly those that are on the South Bay involved in our trail advocacy group there have, might have heard a little bit recently about a study that we've been doing uh, looking at Gilroy in the South up to Mount Amunum. And so um, the background to this is that dating back to around 2021, um, we put a proposal in front of the Woodnext Foundation because uh, they were asking about uh, possible areas to support to help accelerate trail development in the region. Um, and so we put this proposal in front of them to look at this area because it's one of the least developed areas of the Ridge Trail. And the current planned route uh, where we had it currently uh, is really not feasible. Um, and a lot of the partners are very hesitant to engage with us uh, about that route. Um, there was significant partner interest and opportunities uh, to look at different routes and also some ongoing land acquisitions and other opportunities uh, that if we used a different route that we might be able to take advantage of. And it also just happened to coincide with a work that Santa Clara County Parks was doing this year in 2022 uh, around updating their uh, um, master trail plan update. And so all of these things kind of came together uh, at a real strategic time to really push forward uh, this project. Um, and I'm going to hand off to Ryan Fritz to lead you through a little bit of the work that we've been doing on this. Cool. Thanks, Ryan. So a lot of work and uh, great collaboration went into this study, but I'll try to distill it to just what is most important. The route study, one of the first things they looked at was over 40 possible sections of trail, some existing, some uh, conceptual to get from Gilroy in the bottom right of the map through Mount Madonna and up to Mount Amunam and the existing ridge trail we have up there. And they looked at these routes and kind of evaluated them on their challenges or their opportunities to become dedicated trail. And then we worked closely with Santa Clara County Parks and OSA and Midpin to 
come up with a consensus on what would be the most um, attainable route. And if you go to the next slide, Alex, uh, this map that we're looking at shows what this new proposed realignment is. So there's kind of four components we're looking at here, starting in the bottom right. There was the Gilroy to Mount Madonna planned route in blue. And after the study, that route is still staying the same for the planned route. Um, but then we looked at the current Ridge Trail alignment above Mount Madonna in blue and just realized it wasn't feasible. There was so many different private landowners on Summit Road. It was just overall not a pleasant experience for trail users, and it would take a long time to dedicate. So we landed on the purple route, the proposed Ridge Trail realignment, and we also have the yellow route, which we're calling the long-term Ridge Trail option. And if you go to the next one, Alex, looking at the purple proposed realignment, we were really excited about it because it uses some existing parks and trails like Uvas Reservoir, Rancho Cañada del Oro, and Calero um, that could help accelerate those trail openings. There was also additional parking lots, good access to the city, more roads that crossed the trail, and there was really great support from county parks and some other partners in the region. If you want to go to the next slide, Alex. So taking a bit of a closer look at the north part of the proposed route. What was really exciting about it was when you get into Rancho Cañada and Calero, there's 10 or 11 miles of existing multi-use trail um, that would be ready to dedicate with this realignment. And Ryan Mack and I went out there and you can see some of the really glorious views, well-maintained trail. And then the rest of the trail, the purple route where there are gaps, there's still a lot of support and momentum from, from our partners to actually get that trail developed. So there would still be a lot of work to do, but um, some exciting opportunities along this purple route. If you want to go to the next one, Alex, thanks. And I'll check with Marie. Are we still good on time for the two-minute flyover? Yes. Great. I got the thumbs up. So Alex, if you want to stop sharing, um, we have a quick video. I want everyone to buckle their seat belts and get ready for a little fly over. Optimize the video. There's no sound, so I'll go ahead and play. We're looking at the Ridge Trail and we'll zoom in. So starting at Mount Madonna County Park, the Purple Route, we'll go through a new unopened currently part of Mount Madonna Park. Then it goes through this um, large section of private property, but County Parks is working to acquire it. Then we'll enter into Uva South Open Space Preserve where they'll be working on new trails. Right here at Uvas Reservoir, we'll have to cross this spillway, but there is parking. And then the plan trail would weave up onto this ridge line, currently through private property, but it's one of those cases where County Parks is willing to acquire the land as it becomes available. But you start to get some really great views on these ridge lines out to the east to Coyote Valley. And then where it crosses this road right here, we're now actually in Rancho Cañada. Um, there's an existing ranch road, but OSA is evaluating if that will become their dedicated trail. Then there's a Casa Loma staging area, lots of parking here, and we're starting to weave through some existing multi-use trails. Up here at Bald Peaks, you get good views into San Jose, beyond into San Francisco. And then it's just weaving through all of these, it's, it's, sorry, all of these existing trails um, in Claro Park. This is just the interstate right here. But you can see the red line is the existing ridge trail. So there's just a small gap to get across New Almaden here. But then it'll actually merge up with trails in Almaden Quicksilver Park and connect with um, current existing ridge trail. 
So lots of potential on this route, lots of work to do. We're planning to start a collaboration with our partners to see um, where the next dedications and the next work should go. But we're super excited about this reroute as a whole. And I can turn it back over to Alex and Ryan on the presentation. Thanks a lot, Ryan. So I think Ryan did a, a nice walk through there. And I think showing us that north area of the trails is, um, you know, I think one of the uh, the great outcomes of the study that went on there where that wasn't necessarily on our radar when we embarked upon that study, but realizing that we might have 10 plus miles of ridge trail to dedicate um, in the very near future, uh, as well as some other trails, maybe soon to follow after that, uh, really looking at a route that can uh, be connected in a much shorter time frame um, than uh, some of our, our longer term plan routes in the past. Um, and so that really is the impetus for doing some of these uh, different study areas and routing studies, et cetera. And so um, that was a deep dive on one of them that we're doing, uh, but we also wanted to just um, highlight to you all um, a few of the other areas that, uh, that we currently have that are in progress and active right now. And so one of them is, of course, up in the North Bay um, in Sonoma County, uh, where there's a duo of studies, actually, uh, one looking at different route options uh, around uh, Troni Anadel and connections in that area. Uh, these are looking at uh, routes as well as potential land acquisitions, uh, working closely with uh, Sonoma County Parks up in that area. And the other uh, uh, study in that region is looking at the area around Sugarloaf Ridge, Hood Mountain, um, and uh, trails, routes, and acquisitions in that area that include uh, McCormick Ranch as well. Um, and so that is uh, in progress and, and, and moving along as well. Um, another area that we have is the Carquinez Strait Scenic Loop area that is active. This is a Decade-long collaboration that brings together five uh, regionally significant trails, uh, the Bay Trail, Delta Trail, Water Trail, the Anza Trail, and of course the Barrier Ridge Trail. Um, and this is linking together public lands and historic communities um, of the region um, and looking to close gaps uh, as well as putting up uh, potentially, uh, hopefully soon as well, some uh, new wayfinding signs around the region and raising awareness. Um, and then the other area, of course, is the area around North Coyote Valley where we've looked at routing and feasibility studies and looking at options to connect, uh, really make this connection between Santa Teresa County Park in the West over to Mayano Yakima County Ridge, which as you heard is opening later this year in the East. Um, and we're also gearing up to play a role in the Coyote Valley Master Planning Project as well, and really advocate for a trail that will connect these areas across the valley floor. And you just heard from Ryan from, about the Mount Um de Gilroy routing study, which the study portion is complete, but of course, uh, ample work to be done. Uh, but we're looking together to coming together with these partners. Uh, we'll talk about uh, immediate trails that we can dedicate um, sometime, hopefully, in the next uh, one, two, or three years. Um, also looking at uh, collaborating on the recreation planning in the South. Um, and then, uh, of course, fundraising for things such as uh, land acquisition and looking at ways to get across the spillway and river crossings and such, too. Um, so we're definitely uh, going to be moving forward on those. Um, next slide, please. And so, of course, those are the existing studies we have. And uh, what I wanted to end on is just kind of a, a look ahead at other regions. Uh, on the trail team, working closely with Ryan and Hannah, uh, we're always talking about um, where is more work that we can be doing. And so some of these are um, in the works, potentially coming this year. Um, if not, potentially in the in the um, year or two to follow as well. Uh, one that we are going to be moving forward on this year is a Petaluma reroute that a few of us actually went out um, late last year um, and uh, via bicycle explored some different route options from um, Helen Putnam Regional Park, kind of a little bit outside the city of Petaluma and looking at some uh, new options to make a uh, continuous connection into existing Ridge Trail in the downtown area. So we went out with a, an engineer and a planner from the city. And I think what we're looking at is moving forward on that later this year. Um, then further north, uh, looking at the Marin Sonoma border region, um, we would like to embark upon a similar route study in that area to see how we might be able to close some of those gaps. So that's another project that we have in waiting that we'd like to embark upon. 
uh, also similar in the Napa Solano region, uh, we're looking at um, how can we make the best trail connections from Skyline Park up in the north all the way down to Newell Open Space in the south there. Uh, our partners are working on some trails, uh, and then we'd like to be able to study what are the options so that we can make a continuous stretch of ridge trail in this area. Uh, and then last but not least, we're also looking um, just north of uh, Petuino, um, which you heard about from Hannah a little bit earlier. There's some connections from there up to Vallejo Lakes that we'd really like to close those gaps. And we've actually had trail planners go out on ATVs and explore the area. Uh, and we like to get out there and see if we can flag a route, look at the best route study across that region as well. Um, so those are some of the things on the horizon that we're looking to do here at the Ridge Trail. Um, passing it along. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Now that we've spent a good time talking about the amazing trail openings we're going to have, let's talk about how we can experience them. Um, so there are three different kind of events or I guess happenings that we have here. Um, we have our events, which are our signature uh, yearly events. Our biggest one is coming and ride up. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, East Bay Hills Overnight and Ridge Trail Service Day, which is our biggest um stewardship event that happens every November. Our outings are our smaller but still very impactful events that we have throughout the trail. Um, partner hikes and rides, overnight treks, DIY challenges, and curated trip ideas um, on our website um, help kind of activate our, um, our the bridge trail um, in many ways. Um, and then we have our special access VITs. Um, if you haven't been to one, I highly recommend these opportunities. They're great um, opportunities to check out parts of the Ridge Trail that are typically private or um, accessible by permission only. We have one coming up. I will um, introduce that in a little bit. Um, but some that are coming up this year, Fifield Cahill, Hill Ranch, Den Wild Lake, and LaHonda Creek. Um, let's keep it moving. Um, so far, uh, as, as uh, Jenna mentioned, I just started in January, and since then we've had four amazing events um, with already 400 people um, activated on the Ridge Trail, Hill Ranch, VIT, as I mentioned, the Super Stroll and Roll, North Marin Ridge Run, which is a great example of our board helping us collaborate and creating an amazing event with almost $10,000 raised, um, and the Golden Gate Triathlon, uh, Triathlete Club, who chose the Ridge Trail as their um, as an organization that they're fundraising for. Um, and that was a great event as well. Here are some pictures from, from our events so far. Um, my favorite was definitely at the Super Stroll Roll when um, a family brought their child and their dog on the bike and rode part of the Ridge Trail on it. Um, absolutely amazing. <laughs> So here's an opportunity to save the day. As I mentioned, Ridge to Bridge is coming up at the end of April. It is our biggest fundraiser. And I think the most um, exemplary example <laughs> of what the Ridge Trail does, which is connecting people to places. It's a multi-use event, Tennessee Valley. I can't wait to see it. It turns into this hub of everyone, equestrians, hikers, and bikers joining together and having lunch together in beautiful Marin. Um, I'm very excited. Uh, the Solano Overnighter is well underway. Also excited to see how this will go. Um, National Trails Day has three projects in the works um, throughout the Bay Area. Um, we're working on Sutro, Keep Coyote Creek, Creek Beautiful, and, the, um, and Benicia. The East Bay Hills Hike and Ride well underway. And as I mentioned, Ridge Trail Service Day in November. Um, there are only two spots left uh, for this month's uh, VIT outing. Um, today is the last day to register. So if you get a chance, hop on over to our website after this chat and register yourselves. Um, let's keep it going. Ridge to Bridge. As I mentioned, this event is our biggest event and tickets are selling out fast. So far, we only have tickets available for a six mile hike, our 12 mile bike ride and our eight mile equestrian ride. Even if you can't join us, this is a plug to create a fundraising team. We're almost halfway through to our goal of $40,000 raised. Um, and so far, our registration numbers have been tracking faster than last year's. So this is it's just amazing. And it's been an honor to just jump right in and start planning for this. Mm -hmm. 
Here we go. All right. Thanks so much, Nat. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Sabo. I'm our advocacy and outreach manager, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about some of the tools and resources. Um, if you're a circumnavigator or familiar with the Ridge Trail, you might have already um, used a bunch of these. But for those who aren't familiar, um, if you're looking to explore, we've got our uh, handful of resources on the website, um, as well as available on your phone through apps two apps called All Trails and Outer Spatial. Both have all of our trails and information. Uh, if you like to have your phone on you when you're out there on the trail. Uh, guidebook is available uh, to purchase through our website. Really helpful if you like having some a, a paper bet book with you. Mark off some of those trails. Uh, we also have a uh, Bay Area Ridge Trail Explorer map. It's this uh, this one over here. And that's kind of an interactive map you can scroll around on. Um, we are working to improve it, to add more information, make it more up to date, more um, helpful for you in your planning. Uh, and then we also have this planning navigator kind of spreadsheet tool here uh, available on our website. And um, that has all the links, all the information you could possibly ever need for each of the Ridge Trail segments. Um, and so it's also filterable if you're looking for something um, specific like dog friendly hikes, you know, hikes at five miles, that information is all available there. So you can download that through the website. Uh, now these tools are especially helpful uh, if you're a circumnavigator or maybe a future circumnavigator. Uh, this is what we consider the ultimate epic ridge trail adventure. It's getting out there and seeing every little segment that is currently dedicated on the ridge trail. We don't have any hard and fast rules about, uh, you know, how specifically you have to do this. Uh, it's up to you. You can do it any format you like. I had someone reach out the other day and ask if the Ridge Trail was accessible via tandem bike. <laughs> I don't I don't know if anyone's done that yet, uh, but that's the first I had heard of it. Um, you can do it any order. You can go clockwise, counterclockwise, piece by piece. And it might take some weeks, months, or even years. It really doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying the experience and, um, you know, just really gaining that sense of adventure along the way. So um, if this is something that you're maybe already doing or you're interested in, um, just want to pitch out there that we've got some really fun ways to celebrate your accomplishment. Um, we've got our wall of fame on the website where you can have your picture and a little information about um, your stats on how you finished it. Um, you could get a certificate of completion right here. It's really nice. You can either digital or print, uh, patches, pins, all the things you need to do uh, to have to brag about this amazing accomplishment. So um, if you're interested or maybe you've already finished and want to claim these prizes, you can go to ridgetrail.org slash circumnavigation. And I think with that, I'm going to hand it over to Janet. Thank you, Alex. Well, I think hopefully you've got a, a sense of how busy we are <laughs> at the council and hopefully you're inspired to get out and explore maybe a new park or trail on the 400 miles of dedicated trail, but um, turning our attention now for a moment to the last 150 miles of the planned route, there are some challenges. Um, as we all know, the remaining gaps are increasingly complex. Uh, building new trail and closing gaps requires hard work, patience, and reacting quickly when opportunities arise. And uh, not only are many of the last gaps very expensive, but the public funding is insufficient and often has strings associated with it. We also know that sometimes a, a relatively small amount of money can really unstick a small, a stalled project. So that's why we created the, tra the Trail Opportunity Fund. It's all about completing the last 150 miles. So the Trail Opportunity Fund is our quick action fund uh, to provide timely and flexible funding where and when it's needed most. And um, that includes you know, overcoming these obstacles and accelerating trail development. Some examples of that would be um, money for feasibility or routing studies, environmental review, um, trail design, construction money to build the trail. The fund also supports our strategic initiatives such as 
um, working on overnighting or you know building out huts and yurts to support multi-day treks. Um, and then also the Trail Opportunity Fund really helps us be more active partners um, and leverage grants and other funding. Uh, so next, please. So in 2021, we made the first allocations from the fund um, to two projects. One, we helped, uh, the fund helped pay for a memorial bridge over a creek that was needed to connect uh, the Ridge Trail stretch between Guerin Regional Park and Niles Canyon in East Bay Regional Park District. And then secondly, uh, we gave out a grant to a Sonoma partner to study two really challenging gaps on either side of Sonoma Mountain. So that was 2021. And then next, please. Um, last year, um, the Trail Opportunity Fund um, allocations went to three projects. Um, First was the final trail improvements that were needed to prepare Dan's Wild Ride for opening, and that included some gates and some signs in Napa. Um, and then secondly, uh, some funding went to Solana Land Trust to help them with unexpected costs uh, uh, that they needed to open uh, Petwino Park in Solano. And then thirdly, um, it helped fund some of the enhanced tools with, that we helped, that we built out for circumnavigation that Alex was just telling you about. Next, please. So today we've raised um, and seeded about $450,000 for the Trail Opportunity Fund. And we have a goal um, to bring the total raise to 1 million over the next few years. So we're really confident that this is gonna be a, transform a transformational tool um, to help complete the Ridge Trail and to help us uh, address these really difficult ch challenges on the remaining uh, parts of the planned route. So you know, thank you to everyone who's contributed to the Trail Opportunity Fund. Um, and really thank you again to all, all of you, all of our loyal supporters, volunteers, and trail champions. We really couldn't do it without you. Next, please. Um, and really just um, bringing it home um, now, I would like to turn it back to Marie to hear a little bit more about how you can help make a difference. Um, as Janet said, we, we don't do this um, on our own. We are a membership organization. Next slide, please. And it's really you that make a difference. Um, we absolutely love our members. Um, it was the, it is my honor to be a part of such an incredible group of people that are so dedicated. The Ridge Trail is literally built by um, trail lovers, just like everyone on the call. Um, your support is crucial to our work, advancing the trail and our mission to complete all 550 miles. Um, we have over 5,000 members and that accounts for about 50% of our funding. Um, and whether you've been with us since the very beginning, whether you're a 1990, 91, 92, or, or onward, um, or you're a brand new member, we depend on your support to keep going. And as everyone has mentioned, the last 150 miles are going to be the most challenging for us. So we really need you with us. Please, next slide. And there's lots of different ways you can do it. Most of you probably already know this, but just renewing your annual gift and um, through your membership is, is the core way. We also have other ways through non-cash giving, stocks, QCDs, which are charitable, um, qualified charitable distributions if you're 70 or over, or even employee matching. We have a brand new tool called Double the Donation that lets you search for your company and see if they do an employee matching program. And then of course, considering a gift this year towards the Trail Opportunity Fund. Um, and lastly, next slide, please, by considering a legacy gift. And um, we are building a trail that is going to be a legacy for generations to come, and you can, can help with your support. But I first, as we come to a close, want to share a story, a very touching story about a member um, that happened last week. Ermina O'Brien was a member of the Ridge Trail since the very early days in 1994. And she renewed her Ridge Trail membership each year with very small membership gift um, until 2012. And at that point, it was no longer feasible um, because of a move to a long-term care facility. 
And last year, Ermina passed away at the ripe old age of 103. Here she is at 101. And because of her commitment to the Ridge Trail, she decided to make a simple change in her estate plan and designated the Ridge Trail um, as a IRA beneficiary. And she left us a modest sum, but really this small gift came from the heart um, and it will have an impact on an organization like ours. Um, so we're honored to include Ermina as part of our legacy circle. And if you are considering a legacy gift or you want to learn no more, I'm the person to contact. Please um, get a hold of me. And if you've already remembered the Ridge Trail in your will or trust, as Ermina did, or named us as a beneficiary in your IRA, please, um, we would just like to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You are ensuring that the Ridge Trail is completed and will continue on for generations to come. Next slide, please. I want to thank everybody for being um, with us today through and looks like we're ending right on the dot at one o'clock. And as we wrap up, um, please, thanks for your time today, but thanks for your participation and support of the Ridge Trail um, through the years. And thanks for being a part of our community. We really look forward to seeing many of you on the trail and hopefully at Ridge to Bridge or at another event. I'll be at the Hill Ranch event on Saturday. Um, and thank you again. Um, I, I don't know if we can open it up and see everybody as, as we end, but if not, we just want to really share a big thank you and a shout out um, from the entire Ridge Trail team. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us individually. Um, thanks again to everybody.